Do you remember going to the beach when you were little? There's nothing like the first time you meet the ocean. This is a story about water. Our water. You got your towel, everybody got everything? Yeah! Everybody got your shoes, swimsuits. All right, you guys ready to load up? Yeah! Wait, so who's never been to the beach? What? Me, are you sure ready? Okay, guess what we brought today? A surfboard. The Santa Bell Sea School students are the future. They're going to grow up to help advocate for our water quality, for Santa Bell's ecosystems, for Southwest Florida's ecosystems, for the world's ecosystems. We are really absolutely dependent on our water uh, to bring the things that we need to be able to live in harmony here on our islands. Water quality is integral to sea turtles among countless other marine organisms. Not only is that where they live, but it's also where they're foraging and they're mating. If you look up the definition of shorebird, it literally is any bird that frequents the shore. So water is crucial to their life cycle. All of the organisms on these islands depend on our water resources. And it's not just the wildlife, it's also us humans. You know, we depend on clean water and our healthy beaches to support our tourism-based economy. Water is part of my life and part of my livelihood. What draws people to Sanibel Island is the fact that 70% of the island is held in conservation and perpetuity. It's forests, it's wildlife, it's beaches, and it's clear water. Instinctively, we know we need to protect our water for these kids and all kids. As surely as we know, we owe a debt of gratitude to those who protected it for us. The residents of Sanibel did not want to see the island become all high rises, so they formed a nonprofit called SCCF back in 1967 to start to buy land to preserve it for wildlife. We protected a lot of marine habitat. Mangroves were protected. They were, weren't allowed to just clear and develop and dredge. The city of Sanibel was incorporated in 1974. Way before that, there were people that were thinking about community. Our community was really founded on advocacy. It was every, everybody coming together towards a common goal, and that was to stave off the development pressure coming from Lee County. We exist because people want to keep what they have, and, and we're providing tools in some cases, but also voices to uh, protect our paradise. We have an organization that will continue to act as stewards to protect this conservation land and to add to it. Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation has done a wonderful job of helping us understand. I can't tell you how critically important that is, not just today, but also into the future. That is a prime example of one of those living creatures that we may accidentally comb over. So we'll put this little guy right back into the water. Protecting our water and our way of life for the next generation means remaining ever vigilant in our conservation efforts. Lee County is one of the fastest growing counties in all of the United States. Uh, and that development pressure is being projected onto Santa Mon Captiva Islands, uh, just like it was in the 1950s and 60s. The other impacts and pressures that we have is what's going on in the watershed. So we're part of this massive watershed that brings so much water uh, and pollutants to our coastal waters that have a direct impact. When I take my aerial images of the lighthouse, this is actually the perfect location to see the front from the releases from Lake Okeechobee or from our watershed when it rains and the Gulf of Mexico. So they meet right here and it creates this frontal zone of dark brown water and bright blue turquoise clean waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Sadly, we're reminded all too often how crucial it is we remain vigilant with our conservation efforts. Red tide has hit Sanibel Island. Dead fish are washing on shore, spoiling the picture of paradise. In 2018, we had the worst environmental disaster that I have seen in my lifetime. The problem starts here, Lake Okeechobee. The water is chock full of chemicals and nutrients. 
Lawmakers in Florida want the governor to declare a state of emergency over Lake Okeechobee's toxic algae problem. The Army Corps of Engineers opened the floodgates this morning. More than 100 million gallons of that algae-tainted water are rushing into the river every hour. It is a formula for environmental disaster. Our flows from S79 were extremely high. This caused decreased salinity and it allowed um, blue-green algae to thrive in the Clusatchee River. The algae that's been covering the river has made it all the way to the Sanibel Causeway. When the algae came into our system, it created a lot of nutrients and it was just sort of a cataclysm of events that allowed this huge red tide bloom to occur. Exposure can cause a sore throat, nausea, and other health issues. Manatees aren't the only ones being affected here. We've also seen sharks, sea turtles, and various fish washing up on our shores. I spoke with a woman walking along the beach on Sanibel Island. She now calls it Death Beach. The goal here today is to agree um, to move forward with a plan that will finally, um, finally reduce the damaging discharges to the estuaries and move more of that water south into the Everglades and Florida Bay where it's desperately needed. We look forward to working with the Corps on developing this new lake schedule. The science that we do is really applied science. We have this science to solutions approach where we're taking the science that we do out here in the waters, we're applying that to how we can protect the environment here on our islands. RECON is the River Estuary and Coastal Observing Network. We first deployed Recon in 2007. It was the first real-time water quality monitoring network in the area. I'm right out here in front of the causeway in, in the lighthouse. It's an incredibly dynamic place that changes all the time. Here is actually going to be collecting the water samples. She uses a pole that collects water from the entire photic zone. We're monitoring through our Recon sensor network every hour throughout the region at nine locations but it's important to also get points in between and get very specific information. So phytoplankton, community composition, that's only something you can do at the microscope at the lab. We have a lot of water quality problems that re result in algae, either phytoplankton or macroalgae. So eutrophication is the word for what we're doing to the estuary. The slide and it's this concentrated, that's way too much algae. So that means there's been a boom. Science is the first and foundational pillar of the three pillars we use at SCCF to protect our water and our way of life. Education and advocacy are the other two. Our mission is to improve the ocean's future one person at a time. We have hands-on experiential programming for all ages. Have you ever held a hermit crab before? No. No? Look, I'll show you what it feels like. Hold your hand out. Never. Why not? Because... <laughs> that emotional connection is really key and important. That's going to transform the lives of the students that visit Sanibel Sea School and hopefully in the future having those foundational memories um, at their core will create better stewards for our environment here. We're on the Bailey Homestead Preserve. We have a couple of acres of demonstration gardens. Uh, we hold public classes and events and programs here. The southern nine acres that we're standing on is the Native Landscapes and Garden Center's home. This is purple love grass. Planting native helps so that you don't have to use irrigation in your landscape. You don't have to use any fertilizers. Uh, you can reduce the amount of pesticides that are being put on your plants. And so uh, the water quality impacts are less. This is an aerial that was taken in 1944. You can start to visualize it was a very different place than what we're at now. It's an opportunity to show them how Sanibel got to be the way it is and why conservation is so important on the island. We have between the sea turtle and shorebird program probably about 100 very active and passionate volunteers that help out with our nest monitoring programs and we couldn't do it without their help on the beach. They contribute thousands of hours every summer. Local volunteers have come out and they are actually uh, filling buckets with fossilized shell and oyster shell that we've collected from local restaurants. So we're gonna take this out to our restoration site. My name is Keely. I'm the Community Conservation Coordinator at SECF. The volunteers that are going out with us today get to see a different side of SECF. They get to come out and see what we actually are doing, get hands-on, and be part of the restoration effort. Go for it. 
go forth and come. Then they go out into the community. They recruit new volunteers for us and are able to spread the word of what we're doing and hopefully get some more people to care. Okay, right there. Our future is all about clean water. I'm really grateful that my kids will one day be here too and experience the same things that my grandparents did, my parents did, I did. By supporting the SUCF, you're really ensuring that our grandkids and their kids will be able to enjoy uh, these amazing coastal ecosystems here in Southwest Florida. And that's really what it's all about, um, passing that on to the next generation. It's your support that makes it possible for the SCCF to protect our water and our way of life for the next generation.